What is up Taurus? Welcome to your general timeless reading. My name is Jordan. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. I am a master Reiki practitioner and I'm also a tarot reader. So if you'd like a personal reading or a Reiki session, you can go ahead and book it down below through my website in the description box. I do have 20% off all my services now through December 5th. So go ahead, take advantage of that while that's going on. And these are timeless general readings. So whenever you see this, is when it's most meant for you. Take what resonates, leave the rest. Check out my Patreon channel. That's where I do the monthly readings, energy shift readings, moon cycle readings, and weekly Patreon only videos. And I'll have some other content coming out to that platform as well and I do have a promo going on there that is free 15 minute readings for all tier two and three patrons now through the 31st of December so go ahead and check that out let's get into it Taurus let's see what's going on for y'all um if my hair would compromise that'd be cool let's use radiant wise tarot all the tarot decks I use are going to be listed down below in the description box. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. I start show me the way. Um, this feels like the hermit, like kind of coming out of like a little, oh, floor right down. Coming out of like a little dark night of the soul, like show me the way someone who's coming out of a difficult time wanting to have a little bit more clarity about what direction to go into now show me what i most need to see for taurus please show me what i most need to see for taurus sun moon rising venus and jupiter show me what i most need to see for taurus sun moon rising venus and jupiter Five of Pentacles. I don't know why this feels like curiosity for some reason. Um, this is typically a scarcity mindset or abandonment, leaving something behind. It feels like almost like this energy of loss. Like it just feels like someone feeling very lost. Like I've left something, I've left an old cycle, I've left something behind, and now I don't know what direction to go in. It feels like, it just feels like a lot of confusion to be honest. Yeah, Knight of Wands. Yeah, so this is this feels like the journey. It feels more so like an adventure. Like um, this was an impulsive. I left something behind, and now I'm traveling in a new direction. Because the Knight of Wands is a very impulsive energy. It's a very, I did this on a whim, right? What do I do now? Two of Pentacles. <laughs> Where do I want to go? There's the confusion and judgment. Yeah, curious about what their path is. Uh, what choice should they make next? Judgment, Pluto, Scorpio energy, and the Hierophant. This actually feels, <clears throat> this actually feels like an energy coming in. The Hierophant's a teacher. Um, the Hierophant is also contracts. Um, it could it could be relationships, spirituality, higher consciousness. But it feels more so like somebody coming in to assist. Uh, this could be your higher self. It could be an awakening, but it does feel more so like somebody being like, hey, I'm going to teach you um, like an authority figure. So this could be a boss. It could be a job offer. It could be it's it's a contract that you're signing um, because it feels like that teacher energy. It feels like, hey, I'm going to help you through this process. This is Taurus energy for me as a reader. Um, I like this, though. We have the Ace of Swords in reverse and the Nine of Swords. This is scaring you though, because it's not, it's something you're not expecting. Oh, and then we had the five of cups pop out on um, bottom of the deck. I'm not taking everything else because it just fell out of my hand. Five of cups is on the bottom of the deck. This is actually gonna help you mourn whatever it is that you left behind. You're starting with a five and you're ending with a five in reverse. So you're closing out whatever change that you just left, which is really nice. Um, it's just scaring you because it's different, but that fear is not, it's not the truth. It's not the reality. It's just distortion. It's just distortion. It's just rooted in the ego. So you're being challenged to step into this new that this person is offering you, which is really nice. I like this. I like this a lot. Um, let's clarify. Um, it's funny. I heard Soul's Journey, but that's an Oracle deck. Uh, yeah, let's use Terra Royale. Royale. 
Show me what I most need to see for a tortoise, please, spirit. Holy Spirit, angels and guides, show me what I most need to see for Taurus, for the collective. Tell me about the Five of Cups, please, for Taurus. Okay. Let's start with the Five of Pentacles, yeah. Why is the Five of Pentacles here for Taurus? Yeah, there it is. Yeah, the Seven of Swords and the Eight of Pentacles. This is like a sneaking away of something. With the Eight of Pentacles there... I feel like you had been planning this for a while. The Eight of Pentacles actually feels like it was like a plan to like dip out on this, whether it was like a plan to quit this job or leave this relationship. It was kind of like you very suddenly left this, but you had been thinking about it and like planning it for a while. And it's kind of like, okay, I'm done. I'm done with this. I quit this job or I changed this path or I did this and I've been thinking about it and I finally just pulled the plug. Eight of Pentacles, because the Eight of Pentacles is work, it's diligence, it's like something you were practicing or uh, really focused on doing, like really committed to. And the Seven of Swords is like a very sneaky, like devious energy, which is why I say it, it felt kind of like this um, leaving something, not like abandoning something, like it just felt like sneaking off. Like it just, it just felt, it didn't feel like a typical Five of Pentacles it had a weirder energy to it. And the Knight of Wands is like that very sudden, like, okay, I'm out. Uh, so let's look at the Knight of Wands. Yeah, King of Cups. You were not feeling it. Whatever it was, you could have been dealing with somebody who was emotionally manipulative with the King of Cups in reverse, but this could have also been you just like, I wasn't feeling it anymore. I'm not interested in this anymore. I'm not emotionally invested in this. And I felt forced to stay in a situation and I didn't want to be. Yeah, Five of Swords, bottom of the, well, it was the top of the pile, but I put it at the bottom of the deck, so. Five of Swords uh, in reverse is creating too much conflict and too much um, stress in your life, so leaving it behind. Six of Cups, and then we have the from underneath that on the bottom of the deck, yeah. So it could have been a relationship with the Six of Cups, a soulmate connection, but the Six of Cups is also indicative of like a past, um, a past pattern, and with the Hermit there, it's kind of like, I realized that this is not something I want to continue and it wasn't something that was actually bringing me joy anymore. So let's look at the two of pentacles because I feel like this is you questioning your decision. Yeah, so we had the six of swords that popped out. I'm not going to take this whole stack. And then you had the emperor that popped out in the middle of the deck in reverse. So that's definitely you questioning your decision because the emperor is the masculine energy. It's divine masculine energy. The emperor is... With divine masculine energy, that's the energy that we use to create things. That's the energy we use to take action on things. So it's kind of you questioning, should I have really moved on from this? Should I have taken action and stepped away from whatever this was, abandoned whatever this was for you, whether it be a job, a relationship, a living situation? Was that the right move on my part or was it impulsive, right? And there's the confusion, the Seven of Cups. Like, was this the right option for me? Because the Seven of Cups is daydream, but it's also options, right? And underneath that is the Queen of Cups. So for a lot of you, it probably was a connection. And remember, energies could be reversed. This could be you or it could be the other person. Let's look at Judgment. Empress in reverse. Oh, shit. So you have the King and Queen of Cups, and now you have the Emperor and the Empress. All in reverse. This is really poopy because oh, this kind of hurts my heart. It makes me really sad because you have a really divine connection with a king and queen of cups and an emperor and an empress. That's a really, really divine connection. And the reason why I say it's poopy is because this is like self-sabotaging behavior getting in the way then. This is somebody with a runner mentality with the knight of wands and the seven of swords, you know. In judgment in reverse and i'm hoping that this teacher that's coming in this hierophant energy is kind of like this higher consciousness energy the realization of oh i can actually fix these aspects of myself like because that's typically how these patterns go but with an empress in reverse it's telling me that on a soul level because judgment is the soul's path it was not the wrong decision but These two were meant to learn a greater lesson together, right? It might have not been the correct time, 
to walk away from this, right? And that's why it was kind of the two of pentacles. Like, should I have done this? So let's look at the Hierophant. Because the Empress had their own shadow aspect too. Like nobody, nobody in this relationship was in their higher self. Both people were functioning from uh, their shadow, which makes a lot of sense because our nodes are about to switch. So a lot of the collective has a lot of their shadow coming up, a lot of their fears, a lot of a lot of their insecurities, because we're moving into earth and water for our north and south node, which is going to make us want to crave stable and secure and safe dynamics within ourselves and other people, our finances, material world, relationships, all that. And so we have to address the distortion and illusion within ourselves and with others in order to have safety and security. So we're going to be mirroring that between each other. And that's basically what's going on here. They're mirroring their distortion back and forth. And they might not recognize that, but hopefully you're watching this. Then you can see it and be like, hey, let's fix that distortion and let's just have like a stable relationship. Because the contract's not closed out. I want to see what this um, this teacher, this lesson is. Because it, it doesn't feel like the contract. It feels more so like, like somebody being like, hey, you need to learn this. It feels like a teacher energy, like a lesson energy. Yeah, there's the reconciliation. Yeah. Three of Cups. Like, hey, let's come together. Because, yeah, it's it's the Emperor. It's the Emperor having the aha moment, which is really, really nice. Because the King of Pentacles, to me, is the mini Emperor card. We already had the Emperor come out, so we don't have another Emperor in the deck. Because to me, as a reader, for Empress, it's Nine of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles, Empress. And then for the Emperor, it's the King of Pentacles and the Emperor. Um, so you have the King of Pentacles, which represents the Emperor in reverse, just like the Emperor's in reverse. And the Fool, realizing, okay, I need to work through my distorted masculine energy so we can have this new beginning. But I do want to reconcile. I just need to learn to work through my need to control certain situations, right? Four of Pentacles. They might have a really guarded energy or high expectations or a need to um, control things out of a fear of getting hurt. Because when people control things, it's because giving up control means that they have to surrender to the other energies at play and that means that they have to surrender to the unknown and that frightens them right not knowing the truth not knowing what's about to unfold so let's look at the ace of swords in reverse yeah see underneath that is the hangman the hangman is the card of surrender it's also the card of the dark knight the soul um but it is the energy of surrender it means that you just have to surrender to the present moment you just hang there you can't do anything you just gotta surrender so this masculine energy is realizing they cannot control how this relationship unfolds they cannot control the other person they need to allow it to take its own form and this feminine will have to watch their own sign to figure out what they need to heal right uh, Ace of Swords in reverse, uh, Two of Swords, and the Five of Cups in reverse. They didn't see this previously. With the Two of Swords in reverse and the Ace of Swords, leaves another Ace of Swords upright. So this is what they weren't seeing. They weren't seeing the reality of the situation, and that's what they're letting go. They were, they were viewing this relationship through a distorted lens, both of them, because they were projecting their own fears, their own insecurities onto one another. Um, so how can I explain this? For anybody who's like struggling to understand what I'm saying here, I'll use, I'll use it when I went through this lesson. So for example, like I grew up in a household where my parents fought a lot, I had, I had an abusive parent, and so I viewed my partner as my one parent viewed the abusive parent and I basically villainized them in my own mind when in all reality my partner would never do anything to hurt me and it's just because in my mind there was a programming that I correlated love and relationships with something that were toxic something that was painful and so when I got to that point of truly caring and truly loving for my partner I was like okay this is when the pain comes this is when the trauma comes right and it's the need to recognize that you're dubbing a past experience over the present and you're projecting that onto the partner because you're anticipating that to happen. And that's when the Nine of Swords comes in, right? That stress, that anxiety, that fear, that overwhelm, okay? And it's it's not the reality of it. But that's what Chiron in, has been doing in Aries for the collective. Aries is the sign of self. Chiron's the wounded healer. So what it does is bring all of that crud to the surface and say, hey, it's time to heal this. <laughs> Yeah, Page of Wands, which is my wounded child <laughs> in tarot. So this is the wounded child dealing with all that stress, all that anxiety, dubbing the past over the present. Yeah. Okay. 
it's just the need for these two people to recognize that they're projecting that in this dynamic. Yep, and to drop that nine of wands. You no longer have to fight in that state of mind because you're no longer in that situation. That situation is not present right now. It's not, you're not in that past. You're here now. And that person is not doing that to you, right? Okay, let's look at the five of pentacles. And that's, that's a, that's, um, that distortion, that illusion could be really confusing and it could really take a toll on the mental space. So don't be scared to go ask for therapy and things like that. Cause it'd be, it could be really helpful. Uh, the holistic psychologist is a very helpful tool that I've used through that. And even therapy alone has been really helpful. Five of pentacles in reverse and then nine of pentacles. Uh, this is somebody who's mourning the loss of that past trauma and finding their independence. And because of that, they're getting that four of wands, that very stable foundation, that sense of safety and security in the relationship. And they're releasing that nine of swords, the anxiety, the fear, the overwhelm from that wounded child energy. And then they have the nine of cups, the happiness, followed by the ten of cups. You got to be kidding me. The happy. So the nine of cups is the nine of pentacles. Happiness, the happiness with self, contentment with self. Ten of Cups is the happy and contentness with relationships and your environment and your home. And then the Two of Cups is alignment with self and the partnership. And then you have justice, the balance, the balance within your personal reality and then your reality with other people, right? So the balance in your own life is beautiful. But that's because you're realizing that your past is not being dubbed over your present. You're healing such a deep trauma that you're able to now find that equilibrium that you've been looking for, that sense of safety and security, and you're no longer allowing the ego that's developed in childhood to rule what your mind is running on, right? Because you're not running on autopilot. You're not allowing it to control your everyday thoughts. You're allowing your authentic self, your source energy, whatever label you'd like to use to be what you're functioning through, which is beautiful. So I'm very excited for you. If you'd like a personal reading to look into your own life. Go ahead, book it down below. I do have 20% off going on right now. And um, like, share, subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. It helps the channel grow. And I wish you the best on your path. I hope you guys have a great holiday season. Check out Patreon if you want a free 15-minute reading. And I'll see you next time. Later, Gator.